All right. So welcome, welcome to the 2023 Meet the Director and the Major. I'm Dr. Erin McKinley. I am sitting at my kitchen table in my house because I didn't want to stay in my office all day. So it's very common for me to take Zoom calls from this lovely location. I spent all of COVID sitting in this same chair almost. So it's kind of a lucky spot for me. So I don't mind coming home and working. So I am an assistant professor here at LSU and director of the dietetics program. I'm also the graduate program advisor, AKA director of that program as well. And when I am on campus, I'm located in Nap Hall. That's kind of the epicenter of the nutrition program. We are located on the corner of Highland and South Stadium. We have that little mini parking lot in the front that you're not allowed to park in uh, during business hours. Um, but if you need to come in and see us, stop by any time. We're usually around, or you can shoot us an email uh, to make an appointment with one of us. All right, so I do this, I started this a couple of years ago when I started to notice that when students come into the program as freshmen, um, they don't always meet me. And pre a couple of years ago, um, we used to do in-person advising, and some of you may have had that when you came to where myself or Dr. Turi or Dr. King um, from food science would be on site during the summer at the different orientation events, and you would meet with us one-on-one -on -one depending on your concentration, and we would go through and put your schedule for fall together. And so a couple of years ago, they decided to do away with that and allow the college at the college level to do that type of advising during orientation. And now, as you know, uh, starting this school year, we are a non-direct admit college. So if you are a brand new freshman, maybe even transfer, depending on if you directly came into the college or not, uh, through the transfer process, you are probably given uh, given your schedule that was put together um, by the Center for Freshman Year and UCAC. And until you have admission into the college and meet the requirements for that, um, you will be advised by the folks over there. I'm going to address that a little bit more at the end because now as I'm saying it, probably folks have questions about that and I didn't put a slide in. So I'll save that for the end or when I do talk about advising. Regardless, this year more than anything, I wasn't sure who exactly was in our program as dietetic students. Uh, since I can look students up who are incoming freshmen and it says they're in our major, but it might not say their concentration or their ag and not specifically School of Nutrition and Food Science. So I do this and I record it and I send it out to all the students. And then in January, I send it out to all the students again, just in case they might be new uh, that semester from changing a major or something like that just to kind of give y'all a background of who I am, who you're dealing with, what you're dealing with, what you have to look forward to, and what is required to be a part of this profession. Just so you're not caught off guard. And if you are caught off guard, you are early enough in your journey that you may be able to make changes um, away from dietetics if you feel that you need to do that. So just to get to know me a little bit, um, some of you I have met in person, some I may not have, just depending on if you're able to come to SNDA meetings or uh, if you're just brand, brand new and you just haven't figured out uh, where we're located. But um, I'm Dr. McKinley, like I said. So I'm originally from Winsocket, Rhode Island. So that music you were listening to um, as you came in was actually the Brown University radio station that I listened to when I was in high school. I still listen to it every day. Um, and so I split my time between Las Vegas and Rhode Island as a teenager. Um, I went to Methodist University, which is in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, I was actually a freshman when 9-11 happened. So today's always a weird day when I think about um, how awkward that Tuesday was and proceeding the next three and a half years of my collegiate career uh, being located right next to Fort Bragg. Um, and so it was a very interesting collegiate experience. So I actually have a business degree. Um, actually, I double majored in business and marketing and went directly into casino gaming. So I am considered what we call in our business now a career changing dietitian, meaning my degree had nothing to do with nutrition or even science for that matter. And I had a completely different career life before I 
changed my mind on what I wanted to do and came in the direction of dietetics. So I did work in casino gaming and hospitality in Las Vegas for well over six years. And as um, interesting and challenging as that industry is, I definitely still use a lot of the um, leadership and management tools that I developed um, to this day, depending on different situations. And I definitely think of anytime I have to act like a, the boss and handle problems and uh, deal with conflicts, I always laugh at myself afterwards because I sound just like one of my old bosses that I was always impressed that he always had the right thing to say all the time. And now I have found that I weirdly know what to say in the weirdest of moments. So trust that the people that you're working with and working around, you will start to emulate in the best of ways um, as you get older. And so since I was a career changer, it was about 2007, 2008, um, I was going through personal health battle and started to look more into alternative medicine, homeopathy, homeopathic medicine, sorry, um, and starting to realize that the people that I was seeking out information from were probably not legitimate in their actions. And so started to look into who are the nutrition people that I should be working with or trying to, well, working with from a standpoint of who should I be going to as somebody who um, is in need of care from a nutrition standpoint and discovered what a dietitian was and then discovered all the folks that I was working with were definitely not doing the stuff that they were supposed to. And so the recession hit around that time. So it wasn't the best time to be in a business where we rely on taking people's money from them. And so I uh, started to think about what the next steps would be. Found the University of Alabama had their program online way back at that time in 2009, 2010, or 2009 when I was looking into it. And they let me in on a whim. They thought I was crazy because I had no experience, no undergraduate classes that really matched what the DPD program would be. Um, they let me do the master's program at the same time as going back and taking all of the DPD undergraduate classes that were required because I needed to have those competencies or the knowledge requirements done to qualify for their internship. They have a coordinated program, so only their own um, go into their own program. And so I completed my master's and that internship in 2013 through doing master's uh, research, non-thesis research for my master's. I developed a really awesome relationship with some of the tenure track faculty at Alabama, and they asked me to stay to work on research and get my PhD. Uh, so that allowed me to start teaching 11 years ago already, or this is my 11th year of teaching. So I have a lot of teaching experience for someone that um, has been in this profession of academia for as short as I have. And so I finished that in 17. And so while I was there, the different jobs that I did, I worked as um, a nutrition instructor in some capacities and a hospitality manager uh, with Alabama football, basketball, gymnastics, and softball. And so that was an interesting experience that I don't think um, I would have gotten anywhere else that I went. I think I was just very lucky in landing in uh, the Mecca of college football at that time. And so uh, in 2018, came to LSU. And so now I teach every once in a while intro. I teach 3025, which is our professionalism class every fall. I teach the community nutrition class every spring. And then occasionally 4021, which is our research seminar. Uh, we kind of rotate on who teaches that each semester. So you may or may not have me for that. It just kind of depends. And so in addition to teaching and running the DPD, I also do research as a tenure track faculty member. It is a requirement. And so my research is mostly in the area of psychology and health behavior. Um, most of it's in infant feeding and breastfeeding, and I'm starting to move into a more um, agriculture, ag econ direction to kind of match up my previous business and marketing experience with uh, my experience now. And so I, like I said, I direct the activities of the master's and PhD program here at LSU. Uh, we have a master's and PhD of nutrition and food science with concentrations in human nutrition, molecular nutrition, food science and technology, and food bioprocessing. All right, so the RD profession. So you are in this program or this concentration, hopefully with the hopes of becoming a registered dietitian. So a lot of times the very first question I get before I get into the spiel with, um, with recruits that come in senior year with their parents and want information on the program, they don't 
tend to ask about the process. They tend to ask about what's going to happen when this is all over. Like they just skip right to the end of the journey. It's like, what kind of job am I going to have? I can't really tell someone what kind of job they're going to have, nor can I ever tell you what your salary is going to be. And so I do get a lot of questions like, well, how much money am I going to make? And it's like, well, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow in this economy, let alone the four or five or six years out that it would be by the time you were at that point where you were passing the RD exam and getting your first job. And so that's really difficult. And so, yes, there are uh, online uh, federal websites that you can look up um, all different professions and see kind of what the median income is, kind of the low end, the high end. I looked at it the other day. I want to say it was like the median income was like 65000 and that was across the U.S. So you have to realize that there are places in the U.S. that have really low, um, really low, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? cost of living sorry so some places have really low cost of living because of where they're located in the country and so therefore the rd jobs in those areas most like most healthcare jobs are going to be on the low side and then if you think about the opposite there are other places in the u.s that have a very high standard of living high cost of living and those rd jobs may pay close to what is needed to um, be comfortable there um so when you kind of take the really low end with the really high end and then everybody, the averages in between, that median seems correct, but we also don't know from just looking at that number who is part of that. So we don't know, is that 65,000 for five years of experience? Is that entry level? Is that after 10 years, 20, uh, well, after 10 or 20 years, I would hope not. But it's really difficult to determine um, anywhere close what the salary would be. Other things that come into play with that, when you think about where you may end up in the future state-wise, part of that state, um, what hospital systems and healthcare systems are in where you'll end up. A lot of hospital systems, some are known for paying well, some are known for not paying well. And so regardless, people are going to be working at the places that don't pay well because they are in need of employment and hoping they can work their way out of that. And so that's all I'm going to say on salary because it is really difficult. So as far as what kind of dietitian that you want to be, you can do whatever you want. You guys have probably looked at this slide long enough. I think I have this slide too. I had created this list like two years ago, just off. It's probably not even spelled correctly. I just started making a bullet point list of all the different people that I know that do random stuff as dietitians. And what I like to tell folks is that having that RD credential is like a really nice backbone. And then take what you enjoy in life and see if you can integrate that, mesh that with the RD credential. And so you'll see on here, like right at the top, like work with producers and writers on nutrition content on shows and movies. So sometimes a nutrition and food expert is needed to make sure that people don't look stupid while they're trying to focus on food in a movie. And so sometimes dietitians may be involved with that. Um, if you think of a big uh, thing that I think is the next wave of where people are going to be hired, um, health insurance companies, and then um, companies like CVS and Walgreens. Uh, you may notice, uh, if you pay attention to LinkedIn and as, a, as for fun at this point, just to kind of see what's out there, most of the, um, the jobs I am seeing are for folks that have the bachelor's degree that y'all would be having, possibly the RD credential, possibly the master's, having those folks come in to work kind of like a health coach, but in a way that helps people that frequent CVS or frequent Walgreens to be better managing their own care with the different medications that they may be on. So very standard, similar to outpatient type things, but you're housed within a really big company like CVS or Walgreens. Uh, same thing with the healthcare companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, those big health insurance companies don't want to be spending as much on care for individuals. And so since we haven't put, we haven't made a preventative care a priority in this country, and we're essentially just trying to keep ourselves, you know, manage our sickness, so to speak, and then keep ourselves alive. We're not, we're just uh, not trying to prevent things. We're just trying to make it through whatever is wrong with us. That causes health insurance companies to spend millions and millions and billions of dollars on healthcare. 
in this country. And so they are starting to hire dietitians to come in and kind of almost like social workers be placed with people who are in need of care to make sure that maybe they can reduce their risk for something, manage a disease they may have better, something that may reduce the cost for the client and then reduce the cost of healthcare for that company. Another big one that was hot when uh, I was, around the time I was finishing my RD, uh, being a dietitian in a grocery store. I think that's still growing as far as companies seeing the benefit of having that expert on site to do events and programming and to really help the clientele stay with that grocery store um, as far as a chain goes and then working to really promote the, the grocery store as a place where you can come and figure out how to eat healthy. So you can see from these two lists, go back to this one for a second, wellness centers, you can be an RD pretty much everywhere. And then you can start to kind of change it depending on what you're interested in. There's no shortage of things that a dietitian can do. The only thing holding you back is how creative you want or can be with it. And it's perfectly normal to just be a regular old clinical dietitian, someone working in more, more traditional roles. You don't have to be the one um, to have the, the most creative and, and cool job. I'm hoping that you all do because um, it's just kind of any way we can be creating outlets where RDs can be um, at the center and really taken seriously as uh, health professionals. I'm all about that. So I'm sure this list could get longer um, as I start to think about all the different people that I've met over the years that uh, have figured out how to do this. Okay, so on to the process. So some of you may be familiar with this. I may have discussed this with you um, if you came to visit or if we've had some sort of chat about this um, since you've gotten here. And so the road to become a dietitian is that you obtain your four-year undergraduate degree. So that's what you're doing with us. Um, since you're, you're hitting the first two bullet points at the same time in that we are a DPD program, we are accredited, so you're getting your undergrad and that DPD work done um, in the same program. And then when you leave LSU, you will move on to do your thousand hour dietetic internship slash supervised practice. We're starting to get away from using the term dietetic internship and using more of the term supervised practice, just because the word internship always has that connotation of I'm going to hang out with that aunt I never talked to for a summer who happens to be a dietitian and then she's going to make me a dietitian. No, it's totally different. And so 1,000 hours, it was lowered from 1,200 down to 1,000 during COVID. And that was one of the only things that stuck, so to speak, um, that they didn't change back after things kind of went back to normal. And then you have to complete a master's degree. There are no exceptions to this requirement. So what happens is that these programs that you're going into, um, they could be master's and DI together. You could do a master's online separate one institution and do an internship um, on site with a different institution at the same time. So you get it all done um, in the same time. At the end of the day, your whoever is in charge of giving you what's called your verification statement for when you complete your internship, that person needs to see transcripts of a finished master's degree in order to issue you that piece of paper. Um, and in, in issuing you that piece of paper, they're also putting you in what's called the REPS system, R-E-P-S, don't know what that stands for, but it's the system that we use for the RD exam. And so that person puts that information in there and validates that you are eligible for the exam. And so no master's degree, no piece of paper, no putting into the computer for the rep system. So this is the part of the conversation where it's, if grad school is not for you, you have no plans to go, um, and this is an ultimate deal breaker for you, please feel free to schedule something with me and, and chat about it. It may be um, something that we could work out through conversation. I've had over the years, several students that were kind of like, oh, boo, boo hoo, I have to do a master's, I don't want to. And then the more conversations we had about it, they realized the value of it and that the programs are designed to work best for the student to get everything done in one shot and that you will be holding a degree that is higher than some folks that have been RDs for 20 years and, or longer, and that 
since PT and OT and other occupations in health have moved up to that doctorate level, you're almost kind of keeping up with that. We're not on the lowest end of the academic pole anymore. And so we are trying to keep up with everybody else. And so usually by senior year, the real big thing that's holding folks back from moving forward right away is usually some sort of life event that's occurred that they uh, need to be in a certain geographic place and the schools aren't schools they wanna go to or um, it's just not financially doable at the time. And so they still have that intention. They just need to maybe work for a little bit to figure out how they can um, kind of make that work for them. So like I said, if it's a major, major deal breaker, now is the time to start to figure out if there's something else within our concentration, another concentration that would work for you to where you still get your degree from LSU, you're still a part of college, still a part of nutrition, and still part of the College of Ag. We definitely don't want to lose anybody because Ag is the best college on the LSU campus. All right, so other things, completing dietetics at LSU, like I said, it gets you those first two steps. And so around junior year, fall of junior year, uh, you'll take a course, NFS 3025, that's professionalism and dietetics. I say you should take it junior year, but sometimes because of you know, if someone forgets to take biochem or something, they have to, or squeeze in micro because it's not offered any other time. Um, some seniors do take 3025, but I'm seeing less and less as the years go on. And so you'll take this class. It fully prepares you to get yourself ready to apply to graduate programs, supervised practice programs. Even if you are in dietetics because you like dietetics as a nice backup, but you have dreams of going to PA school, med school, PT, OT, dental school, all the things, all the things. But if that doesn't work out, you still may have that opportunity to go forward with the process to become a dietitian. Um, even if you're applying to one of those other allied health schools, I still help you go through really putting yourself together as far as having a solid resume, a really good personal statement. We go through and do um, a lot of activities to really get you to start being comfortable about talking about yourself in front of other people. You will do a little kind of mock poster presentation uh, to kind of pretend like you're at a conference. You'll do like a fake interview video that's very popular these days is giving applicants a list of questions. And it's like, oh, make a 10 minute video about yourself and answer these questions. And so I teach the students how not just to make good answers to the questions, but to make good videos on top of that. And so what ends up happening is that during senior year, you have exclusive access to me. If you need me, I will make time for you um, within reason, business hours, that sort of thing. Um, and you'll have all the materials that you need to be successful. So a lot of times leaving 3025, fall of junior year, you're like, okay, yeah, I have my resume. Yeah, I have my personal statement. You'll put those things away for about a year and then you'll come back to it fall of senior year and you'll have it to update. And it won't take as much time for you to put that stuff together. Other materials, um, I have a Google Drive that is exclusively only for the seniors that are applying or any alumni that come back that want to apply that year. Um, so even after you leave, I still am here for you um, in that if you take that year off, two years off, and then you come back. I had a student that emailed me last week. He was like, hey, I finished my master's. It's time to do an internship. And I was like, okay, cool. Here's the Yes, I will give you a letter of recommendation, and here's the links to all the stuff that you may want to look at if you need help with anything, because he was part of that group that didn't have to take 3025 back in the day. And so you have more information than most. And so one thing I will say that separates this program from other dietetics programs in the country is that you won't find a DPD director like me you won't find someone that goes above and beyond. If you think I exist at other universities, they don't. Um, the fact that I put as much time and effort into the students is something that internship directors know happens and they love our students because they're really good students and I prepare you well for the future so that they want to have you in their program. All right, so a little bit more bragging about how awesome we are so you don't leave us. Our internship match rate. So the internship match, we, uh, for one more year, are using, uh, um, so for most of you, the match will not exist. What will replace it? I don't know yet. They just told us that it's going away. They're giving us one year and they're giving internships one year to figure their stuff out. And so 
we used to use, or we I am using for another year, a very similar system to when med students apply for residencies. They apply to more than one, they rank their preferences, and then like they kind of match preferences to who wants who. And that becomes the list of where people end up going for uh, their supervised practice. And so for uh, for a very long time, there was not a lot of places to do internships and supervised practice, but there was still a lot of students in dietetics. And so nationally, for the longest time, even back when I was a student you know, doing this whole thing, they were always talking about this like 50% match rate nationally, 50%, 50%. And so it's gone up to about 70% or so of students are actually matched successfully to programs and gain admission to programs. And so the last four years, LSU has been 100% among students who applied to grad programs, internships, and grad programs that had an eventual path to it, like were guaranteed to have an internship um, if they completed that grad program, if they applied properly. That's my little asterisk. I had one student last year that was convinced that he had applied properly, and then he was telling me how he applied, and I was like, that's not even how you apply to that program and then he was like yeah, I made it up because I didn't like he just didn't want to admit to me that he didn't want to apply anywhere so he just lied about applying no point to that y'all okay so we are considered one of the top DVD programs in the country I was told that when I got there when I got here and I'm keeping it and so if you want more information on just our department nfs.lsu.edu it's a newer website I do need to make updates to the website, including our uh, latest handbook for the program. The one from last year is pretty much the same. We have some uh, new faculty members. And so his information, Dr. Wise is in there now. And then we kind of switched up some of the advising. It doesn't affect dietetic students as Dr. Wise will be taking over um, the other half of the pre-meds. Um, so if you've been here for a year or so and you've been talking to somebody through advising, um, you'll still be with that same person. So even if you want to look at last year's handbook, it's still pretty applicable, but I'll get that new one up and running um, with our new website pretty soon. And so they don't, they took our pictures off the website. I forgot about that. But um, if you Google LSU dietetics, you can find our old website that is still active and all of our pictures are on there. Some of them are quite old and some of us don't look like that anymore, but at least you can put a name with a face. So like I said, advising, Here's our full advising list. And so those who advise dietetics are those that teach dietetics. So Mrs. Milioto has folks with the last name that start with A or A through B. I have C through I. Ms. Barleycorn, who is our undergraduate coordinator. So if you can't find me and you have a question about transfer credit, taking a summer class, anything that's related to academics, you can go and ask her. Um, she's a dietitian as well. And so she's kind of my, my backup when I'm out of town, I'm at a conference, I'm sick, anything like that. Um, and then Miss Dore has M through Q, Dr. Keenan has R through Z. And so Miss Myhand is available, but she is supposed to focus on our NHS uh, students, but she still may from time to time um, work with dietetic students. So in addition to this, I see all incoming transfer students uh, before they start, just to make sure they get started on the right track. So this is in our handbook. It just looks a little different with um, the addition of Dr. Wise. I think Dr. Turi was doing it before. Now it's him. Okay. So how can you be successful in this major? If, even if you're just getting started this semester or you've been with us for about a year, big thing is getting the best grades you can. So you have to remember that you have to go to grad school. And so grad school admissions are a little bit tighter than undergraduate, and there's no budging on them as far as if you don't qualify, they probably don't even want to look at you. And so usually master's programs will not, will not consider anybody with less than a 3.0. So you need to be getting Bs or better, not B minuses. Yes, a B minus will get you through. Yes, a C minus will get you through, but it's not going to help you as far as um, GPA is concerned. You probably, if you haven't already, uh, should join the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. It is a requirement for some of our classes as you get a discount on the materials we use in the class. And so eatrightpro.org, 
can go under membership. They have a student section. It's only $58 a year. And that opens you up to scholarship opportunities within the uh, Academy Foundation, in addition to exclusive leadership opportunities for students and um, access to all the materials that are available on that website. If you haven't joined SNDA, I heavily suggest that. Um, it's a great group of students so far. We have 60 members this year so far and growing as I uh, find more that haven't found us yet. And so I like to consider SNDA kind of the hub for all of the activity of the students. Um, it's a really great place to figure out volunteer stuff, like if you need volunteer activities, like you got the work thing handled, but you need volunteering. Um, it's also, we also offer scholarships, conference stipends. We have uh, awards throughout the year based off of you know, your grades, your activity in the club, things of that nature. Um, in addition to leadership opportunities that may be available, and it's just like a really, you know, if you're going to be in a nutrition program, it's almost expected that you're part of the nutrition club. Back in the day, I used to have directors say they thought it was weird if they saw that a student wasn't a part of the student club. And I've had over the years students just stiff arm, like, no, I don't want to be a part of it. And I don't understand why. Um, even if you don't want to join as a member, you're still welcome to come to our meetings. Uh, they're on Mondays. The last Monday of the month over in human ecology, um, you just don't get the member benefits that go with being a member, like access to those scholarships, access to our mentoring program. Um, you wouldn't be able to, what was the other thing? One of the things I do anytime I get an email about a job opening or a really good volunteer opportunity, SNDA members get it first for 24 hours. And then I send it to the rest of the students. And a lot of times, whatever it was, it's filled or taken by the time I go to send it to everybody else. Uh, so that's kind of one of those really good uh, benefits. In addition to doing the best you can in school, start volunteering in some capacity. It can be anything. It doesn't even have to be related directly to nutrition. As long as it's involving helping people in some way, you're gaining skills that I will help you put on paper when you get to 3025. There, I have not been stumped yet. There is nothing that you have done in your adult life that I can't stretch to fit our profession. It could have been one little con random conversation with somebody and I can turn it into something that you learned or something you gained from it. So even if it's um, something as small as like last year, we had a lot of students to help with St. Vincent de Paul and they needed the most help with like the clothing stuff. So they were like folding clothes and doing things for the thrift shop. And they were like, I'm not learning anything, but then they're interacting and working with these different programs and working with different populations of people. And I just needed to point that out to them. So have no fear that whatever volunteering you're able to get done, I can help you put it down on paper pretty well. If you are able to uh, obtain some type of paid work, uh, paid work looks a little bit stronger on a resume and an application than volunteering because when you're paid, it means you are held to some sort of standard. And that at some point you will be evaluated for that work. And so some may look at that a little bit more strongly than volunteering um, because there's greater chance that you're more invested in that. If you can't work, that's where you kind of bump up the volunteer time. I've had students in the past whose families would not let them work. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like, you are here to go to school, you focus on school. It's like, okay, well then they would go and volunteer and then just not tell anybody, that sort of thing. And so if you can't work, bump up that volunteer time, but then start to kind of be a little bit more creative with that. It's like if you go to the food bank, you know, once a week and then try to do something else somewhere else. So you have different locations that you're doing this work at. Start networking with local dietitians. And so you don't need to join brand. If you join the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and you indicate that you live in Louisiana with a Louisiana address, you are automatically a part of the Louisiana Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Um, I am the current president for this year. I am also the person that manages all of the business for brand, which is the Baton Rouge Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And so we are, you know, just this, a small group of a couple hundred RDs that try to get together when we can. We have an event that's on the Eat Right BR Instagram. Um, we have a Taco Tuesday event coming up at the end of September. Those events are great because the 
some RDs do show up, but they're very, very open to talking to students, talking to interns. Some interns end up coming from like Fran U, sometimes from Southern, just depends on if the students are interested in coming to these events. It allows you some time to kind of ask them questions and we'll have um, folks kind of just show up that still live locally that are alumni of the university that just pop in to say hi. Um, and so it's kind of nice for students to meet these individuals so you get that network going. And then arranging opportunities to shadow RDs. And so through that networking and through professional stalking on LinkedIn and Instagram and things of that nature, you can start to reach out to dietitians that are doing things that you're interested, you think you're interested in. The best thing that you can get out of shadowing is realizing what you don't want to do. Sounds funny, but it's very useful. I would rather have you shadow an RD in a particular area you come back after three months and you're like, I hate that, never want to do it again, because then you will not invest your time in becoming that type of dietitian. Yeah, you may have to step foot in the hospital again as an intern. We all have to, but maybe you'd realize that you don't like the ICU as much as you thought. I had a student years ago, years ago, when I, I think she was in my class. I can't even remember at this point. She had set up a rotation at UAB's burn unit. She lasted one week. This is a girl who said, I'm going to be a burn dietitian. She lasted one week. And we were like, what happened? She goes, dude, you can't smell videos. She'd only seen YouTube videos of burn victims and working with them. And she said, when she stepped foot and the senses all came together, she's like, I, I can't do this for the rest of my life. It smells like, like burning flesh, essentially. And she's like, that is not what, nope. She's like, you can't look, she goes, you can't get past it. It doesn't go away. It doesn't fade away. It's not like when you walk into a into a kitchen in the and there's something rotting that they found and they throw it away and the smell goes away eventually. That's kind of how she was describing it. And so she was like, "Oh, I'm glad I did that now instead of banking my entire future on getting advanced education in that area and going into that area." She figured out what she didn't want to do. Another great thing that comes out of shadowing RDs and getting to, and networking with RDs and working with them is that when the time comes that you need a recommendation letter, you have more people to choose from. Okay, so more information on SNDA. Our next meeting is Monday. I forgot to change it. I made this PowerPoint before we changed the Mondays to Mondays. So it's $20 a year or $10 a semester. Um, our meetings are the last Monday of each month uh, at 4.30 in the Human Ecology Lobby. This is the link. You can also check them out on Instagram at SNDA at LSU. And so then within that Tiger to Tiger mentoring program, we started this kind of during COVID as uh, a peer mentoring group. And so pretty much what will happen if you're interested in joining that would be that you get paired up with either a junior or a senior. And each month you'll be required to have a little monthly meeting, a little chat, do something together, and that you kind of learn from them as from their journey through our program, kind of follow them on their if, you, if it's a senior, you're seeing firsthand how they're dealing with everything. Um, and then with the juniors, kind of seeing firsthand how they're starting to prepare um, for that senior year. And so it's a great opportunity to learn from your classmates to really figure out what you may want to do um, and or not want to do. And um, we do uh, sometimes we do little events just for the mentoring program. Um, so we'll figure out what that looks like this year, but we'll send out this information this week um, about how to get involved in that. And you have to be a member of SNTA to be a um, part of that. Okay, so going all in, get the edge you need to succeed is my now defunct podcast, but it's still on YouTube. I did 99 episodes and I was done. And so um, I'm moving, as I move into this next year of my career, I'll probably start a different podcast, but this was started during COVID because uh, we usually have in November an on-site DI fair, uh, graduate program fair um, on the LSU campus just for LSU students. And so when COVID hit, we weren't able to do that. And this was my way of bringing students and directors together. So we actually used to do live podcast recordings with an audience of students with the program directors, and they would pretty much just come on, talk about their program, show a little PowerPoint, 
uh, answer questions and kind of get out there like this is what you need to apply to our program. This is what we're looking for. And so, yes, some of those things are a little dated, but a lot of those directors are still at those institutions. And so through watching the videos, you kind of get a vibe of how they are um, and, and, and how they interact in, a, in that type of setting. Uh, so if you go on YouTube, Dr. Well, that's the bit.ly, but if you just go into YouTube and put Dr. Aaron McKinley, all of those 99 pro, uh, episodes will come up. I did several uh, senior episodes right after students graduated for a couple of years, um, even did a follow-up with somebody halfway through their internship. So there's different professional development episodes on there as well. But I like to throw it out there because it's on YouTube. It's free to watch. You might as well do it. I put three years of work into it. <laughs> Can't let it go to waste. All right, questions. I know I, and yes, that is how I teach and how I talk is I fly through info, but I want to make sure we got everything. And so if anyone has any questions that they feel comfortable at, um, asking um, on this setting, please go ahead and do so. I think the only thing I did not talk about that I said I was gonna talk about was this whole UCAC, UCFY thing. And it mostly affects freshmen who have come in, in that if you're a new incoming freshman this year, you did not get direct admit to the college, and therefore you would be expected to be advised by the individuals in UCAC, which we totally encourage. We want that system to be used. Uh, if you are unsure about the guidance that they give you, do not hesitate to look on that list of who would end up being your advisor in the program, or if you just want to come straight to me, show me what they gave you. If you're questioning, if they're getting you on the right track, if you're, because the one thing that ends up coming up, a big question, I guess, I just want to make sure I'm on track. Am I on track? Because if the semester doesn't look the same as their friends, they start to get a little nervous. Okay, Gabriella, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, you said something about the internship, and I just wanted to know if the assistantship works as the internship. Ooh, um, at those particular institutions? Uh, no, I mean, like, if I find any uh, assistantship uh, that could work as the time that I had to do the internship, I mean, like, I can replace the assistantship for the internship. Oh, uh, no, uh, the inter, the inter, the supervised practice is a very structured thing that you have to get done where you have to complete a number of competencies. So like the, the DPD teaches you the what, and the internship makes you put it into action. And so everything that's on the RD exam comes from us as far as the knowledge requirement, but the supervised practice slash dietetic internship, that's where, that's where you really figure out how to be an RD and use all of the information that you've learned. So nothing is replaces that as far as that goes. It is very uncommon for students who go into a grad program with a dietetic internship to have an assistantship. It's not completely impossible, but it's, I'm seeing it less and less because when you think about a graduate assistantship, you owe somebody 20 hours a week of your time and your average supervised practice is 32 hours a week. So you add that up, that's a lot of hours, more hours than someone has in a week and then including schoolwork in that as well. And so it's not practical. You might see half GA positions or quarter GA positions as they call them, where it's 10 hours a week but then only half the tuition is taken care of. I don't really, have, I haven't seen one of those since I was a grad student. Um, so it's, I know it's very common when we talk about grad school, like you shouldn't be paying for grad school. You should be getting an assistantship. It's a little bit different in our business because of the supervised practice component. One thing you could do <laughs> is that if you chose to complete your master's first, so say you get into a program, they give you an assistantship, you just focus on getting your master's done. And then after that, you do your supervised practice, either at that institution or a different institution. That is, that's, that's another possibility. There are a lot of internship programs that as they've gone through this change to meet the, the deadline for the master's, they've become master's only. So meaning applicants have to have their master's done to apply 
lot of major universities like Michigan State and Michigan have switched to that because um, that's just how it works out best for them. So there's still, um, I have seniors even in this class, I had one last year that they wanted to go and get a master's in something that wasn't connected to a supervised practice program. Like one is very interested in like sports science uh, and the other one, it was very specific thing of exercise science, a very specific program on exercise science. And he is going and doing that first, knowing that he still has a lot of doors that will open for him when he's done with that master's that he can get his internship done and then go and do what he wants to do as a dietitian. It makes the process a little longer. Some people don't like that. Some people are fine with that. It just kind of depends on their, their situation. Is the DPD program, you, that goes with like us just completing our four years as mm -hmm. a dietetics major, right? Like that's not mm -hmm. after undergrad. No, we have integrated everything that you need for the didactic program into the undergraduate program. So you're not taking unnecessary classes. I guess once upon a time at other universities, it wasn't set up that nicely but these days both are together most of the time to where it's just one shot four years but it's, it's one of those things when if someone were to apply to an internship they would expect them to have a bachelor's degree like done or about to be done that semester so it's it's not common for someone to bypass the bachelor's and go straight to an internship all right, well, if you're watching this at home at any time in the future and you have questions, please let me know. emckinley1 at lsu.edu. Thank you for taking some time out to learn more about our program. And like I said, if you need anything, let me know. And then don't be afraid to join SNDA to be among your peers each month. And I hope that you are enjoying everything so far. And please, please, please let me know if you need anything.